In this video, we will how to set up your CD simulations to simulate the motions of these wind turbine ventilators. So we will take a look on these five steps in setting, setting up your CD simulations. So we will take a look on how to set up the boundary conditions for these particular problems, how to set up the physical model for these problems. Then we will take a look on how to do the meshings and how to set up the approach to solve the governing equations of the physical models, uh, finally post-processing post the results. So we will use the SASCN software to simulate the motions of your wind turbine. So here is in your SASCN, the first step is to import your model import your SOLIDWORKS model so once you import it, you're able to see the geometries of your of your SOLIDWORKS models so underneath these uh, geometries inside the part here so you're able to see actually um, the different bodies for different part of your solid work model so this is this is the body one is your channel you got a suction pipes you got the the chamber so connected to this chamber this is your body four so above the body four you got um, your body five which is your turbine ventilators. So what happening is you got a flow coming into these channels and this flow will cause the, the rotations of the wind turbines. So these turbine ventilators, as it turns, it will suck the air from your chamber, okay, through this uh, body four here. So this is the connections between your rotating domain and your chambers. And connected to these chambers, you got the suction pipes. So this is where the air is being drawn from this inlet. Okay. So all in all, you will have a three different domains. So this is your your channel. This is where the flow is coming in. You can name it as a channel. This is your turbine ventilator domain. This is where you have the turbine ventilator within it. And finally, you got a chamber and connected to this chamber, you got this, uh, uh, the connections between your ventilators and your chambers and also your, uh, your suction pipes. So this, uh, all in all this is you can combine all these three body together. For convenient, uh, you probably should combine them together using a boolean operation called unite. Okay, so this will, in fact, this will produce. Um, so this operations will unite all those three body together. Okay, you can probably call this one uh, chamber, chamber, and remove uh, those bodies. Um, the repeating bodies okay <coughs> right so you probably can refresh your geometries um, so the first steps is uh, creating the boundary conditions okay so uh, if you expand this one your chambers um, <coughs> so you're gonna have uh, all these faces together so these are the faces <coughs> Of, uh, of the chambers, what you can do is 
you can uh, name give name to each of the faces. So you do the uh, split by patch, right? <clears throat> and you can provide the name uh, for each or each of these faces. So these faces represent the boundaries for these chambers. <clears throat> So uh, we got a, a section here. This is where the, the air is being drawn by the, uh, the, the air that is coming into the chambers due to the wind turbine, the t due to the, 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 uh, the rotating motions of your turbine ventilators. Then we have actually the interface. So this uh, blue color here is the interface between your rotating domain and your um, your chambers okay then we also um, have um, this one um, these sections that interface also with uh, with your channel domains okay so we can probably name this one um, this one so this is where the air is being suck in into the chamber due to the rotation of the wind turbine we can name this one as inflow so this is um, the interface between your ventilators and the chambers okay you can name it as an interface so this part and this part okay will also interface um, uh, uh, <clears throat> also is an interface between your channel and your chambers so this is you can call it an interface too the remaining will be wall the remaining will be uh, would have the boundary conditions as a wall right so the remaining are wall so what you can do is uh, you can rename this one as wall Right, so you would have now uh, interface. You can name it as uh, interface one, interface two, interface two. Then you have the wall and your inlet where the air is coming in. So similarly for your channel, you're gonna have an uh, inlet flow coming in and outlet. Um, So this will be your inlet. This will be the outlet. This is the wall of your channel. So inside your channel, you also have the interface. So inside this channel, there is an interface between um, interface. This will be the interface between your ventilator domain and the channel. So you can select all this and call it uh, interface one. Right. Uh, And you can uh, select this, this part. So this gonna be, in fact, um, the interface between uh, the chamber and the channel. So you can call this one the interface two. This, in fact, would be the interface um, between uh, between your ventilator domain and also your, your channel domains. So this one, uh, you can, in fact, uh, combine to your interface one, combine together you know, into interface one, right? So this will be the ventilators, finally, on the ventilator domain. Um, so we got this part 
you name it as uh, interface uh, one. So this is um, between the channel and the ventilators. Now the bottom is between. Um, it's actually has two parts. So a part of it is between the channel and your ventilator domain, and part of it is between the um, the ventilator and the chamber. So you can simply name this one as, as, as interface two. Now, uh, really, the remaining are uh, uh, will be the turbine, right? So the the remaining is actually uh, the is actually is your your turbine ventilators. So what you can do is you can rename the remaining as as turbine. So doing this, you giving the name for all your boundaries. And the next step is to provide a boundary condition to all these boundaries. <coughs> So um, so we create a new physics continuum. And create uh, a new regions. So um, you're gonna create three regions. Uh, uh, in fact, one regions for the channel, one regions for the chamber, and one region for your ventilator because there are three uh, different parts. So you can uh, rename this one. This is your channel. <coughs> okay. Um, then creates a regions uh, for your chamber. And finally, uh, create your regions uh, uh, for your ventilators. Okay, so, so this one you will assign to chambers. This one you will assign to channel. This one you will assign to uh, ventilators. <coughs> Okay, so here is where you define the boundary conditions. So here you can create the different boundary conditions and assign it to the boundary that you just created. <coughs> so for example, uh, this one you can, for your chambers, uh, this is, um, this will be the wall. So you simply, um, you can name this one as your wall. Um, right? So this is uh, this is the in your 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 interface. Right, um, you can name this one as your interface one. Then this one is your interface two. Finally, you will need for your inflow as well. So this will be the inflow. Right? So at the moment we're assigning the wall uh, to all your interv all your um uh e e we, we have the uh, the wall type of boundary conditions that is assigned to all your boundaries. Obviously this is not the case for war, it will be war. For interface, um, 
we will um, create a we will link link it link the interface with the interface uh, of your channel of or the, or interface of the the ventilators in a moment <clears throat> for the inflow so this will be uh, where the the air is being drawn we can use the stagnation inlet for this one now we can move on to the channel so your channel you're gonna have how many you will need also uh, five okay five boundaries so you can proceed to create five boundaries right so assign this channel to your channel and um, so wall will be wall so you can rename this one as wall for your easy reference um, then an inlet will be the velocity inlet so you can rename this one as inlet as well for your uh, convenience reference um, we got uh, outlet so we can do outlet this will be the pressure outlet uh, finally we have interface one and two then interface uh, two so this will be interface one uh, this will be interface two okay so we will uh, we will take a look take a look later on how to connect all these interfaces together so finally move on to your ventilators uh, so ventilators is gonna have uh, uh, three boundaries so proceed to create the uh, three boundaries uh, this is the interface one um, your turbine will be a wall this will be interface two Okay, so the next step is actually uh, is to connect all the interface together. So uh, for chambers, we, we got uh, this, the inter interface one. This is between, um, okay, this is um, uh, between your chambers and your ventilator's domain. So uh, this will match, you know, this will be sharing, this boundary will be sharing the boundaries with the, uh, so these boundaries, interface one of the chamber will be sharing the boundaries uh, will be sharing with these uh, uh, boundaries of your ventilator domain, okay? So what you can do is you can uh, click both of these together, right click and create an interface, right? So this uh, action will uh, will link the, these two boundary together. <coughs> now, uh, part of your uh, chambers here also, um, okay, also is also this interface too is is a uh, um, is an interface between your channel and the chambers. What you can do is you can uh, go to your ch channel here, okay. So this interface two is sharing uh, um, is sharing a part of the boundaries in your channel. So you can right click these two and create interface as well. So this will link um, the boundaries of your chamber and the boundaries for the channels, right? So finally, we go to channel. Right, uh, channel, so and ventilators. So this interface one or channel and your interface one or ventilators, they're sharing the same boundaries. So you can also right click to create interface. So all, all in all, we got three. Uh, we got three boundaries they are sharing. So you can go to this interface and check it. We created three different interface. 
So this is um, this is between the ventilators, <coughs> ventilators and the chambers. So this is between the chamber and uh, uh, the, between the channel and the chambers. And finally, we got between uh, the boundaries shared by uh, the ventilator and the channel, right? So there are actually there, 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 uh, there this uh, interface two will be different from the rest. So for this interface one, we are expecting actually the floor able to pass through. A similar goal for interface three, we we uh, we are expecting actually the floor uh, will be passing through the floor from the channel will, will, will be um, or uh, the floor from the channel or the floor for, for the ventilator to actually will pass through these boundaries. However, for your interface two here, uh, this is this will be acting like a wall. So no air will actually will go through these boundaries. What you can do is you can go to um, this interface two and simp simply uh, choose a buffer uh, interface. So this will uh, result in a boundaries where the floor is not being, not being able to cross. Right. So having set up your boundary conditions, now uh, we need to set up your physical models. So the physical models is is here your continuum. Um, so double click your model here. You can select the appropriate model. In this case, uh, we'll be simulating the air, uh, okay, inside of your entire computational domains. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it will be 3D. Um, it will be a gas inside. Um, it will be an unsteady. So we can do a couple of floor. It will be a constant density as well. Um, it will be a turbulent floor. Um, so we can do a, a K omega models. We gamma transitions. We can include gravity as well. And that's, that's all probably, we, probably that we need uh, for this particular problem. Right, we can do add additive meshing as well. So, so inside your air model here, you can prescribe um, uh, your air. So here uh, we can prescribe the, the the value of the density of the air and also viscosity of the air. So here we can also um, include the, the the gravity. So uh, so the gravity is going to be uh, along the y uh, y axis. So you, what you can do is you can go to you can change your gravity to here minus nine point eight one. So this is x y z. Now this is where you prescribe also your, your, your initial conditions. Okay. So here uh, inside the model here you can uh, include the initial conditions inside this domain. Okay. Okay, so So what you can expect is uh, the air. So it depends on what is the velocity of the air inside this domain. Right? Um, so say uh, we simulate in one of the case here with a wind vein velocity of 9.5 meter per second. So we're expecting actually the air inside the domain to be a, a 9.5 meter per second. 
So what we can do here is uh, we can go to the initial conditions and prescribe the, velo the value of the velocities. So, uh, so here we got x are pointed um, uh, uh, x actually pointed to to the left, right? So uh, the flow inside of the domain is going to be an along the x. So you're going to be a negative nine point five. So this will provide the velocity inside the air, uh, inside your channel. Okay. So you have to go to your chamber here and prescribe the physical continents for your channel and for your ventilators. And recheck our interface. So So these two actually do not perfectly match. Um, right. So this bottom part um, of the channel, these parts, this is interface is actually shared with uh, the interface two here. So we probably need to split out these parts. We go to your geometries uh, for your channel. So these parts we need to split up. Yeah, I call it interface three. Okay. So um, now we create new boundaries for three. And name it interface three. For, for the channel. Now, what we can now, so we link up these two again. Uh, So you can go to the inlet here and uh, change the inlet velocity on 9.5. So this will result in the inlet to add a velocity on 9.5. Okay. So you should, uh, before we move on to next steps, you should check your um, your interface as well. Make sure that they match with the boundaries. So actually, uh, part of the part of your interface one. Your interface one actually do not entirely match with the interface one of your ventilators. In fact, uh, for interface one of your channel here, the bottom part is actually shared with your the interface the interface two of your ventilators. Okay, so we need in fact we need to split up uh, your interface one of your channel you can go to your channel 
we should split this part out and call it interface three. Okay. So go to the channel and define a new boundaries for your interface three. So in fact, this part should share with um, should share with this. So so we can select these two again and create another interface for right. So this interface four is between um, your channel and the ventilators, power the ventilators. All right. Okay. So there will be a four interface in totals. Now, um, the next step is to define the physical models for the rotations. So, the, so uh, to define the uh, so to define the rotations of the turbines, we got uh, so we got a wind that is uh, causing the rotation of the turbine. We will use a model uh, called uh, sixty degree of freedom model, sixty OF models. So to create this model, we go to two. Go to motions and create a D, DFBI rotations and select this DFBI rotation and translation. So this is a 60 of F models. Now, um, once we create that, we go to your um, go to your regions, go to ventilator here, and prescribe this domain, the motional domain. Um, to be governed by the 60 OF, right? So once we uh, select these options, so now the ventilators will rotate uh, by 60 degree of freedoms. So this allow us, uh, we'll create these options, the FBI, where we can create a new bodies, a new continuum bodies. So here we can prescribe the surface, of your 60 of body in this case it will be your tur your turbine so this model will be in fact it will be rotating uh, around your y-axis so you'll be a 1d of models and um, you can prescribe your body mass the mass of your turbine So in this case, uh, it's going to be a 5 kg turbine model. So here you can prescribe your rotating uh, axis origins uh, as well as rot your ro rotations axis directions. So direction is going to be uh, along the y axis. <coughs> Now you can prescribe the uh, velocity, the center of mass, and moment inertias. So this value we can obtain uh, from your solid work. So if you go to your solid work uh, for, your, for your turbine ventilators, you can go to the mass properties here. Okay, so... Uh, here you can prescribe the material uh, for your turbine blade. Okay. 
for example, if you can use aluminiums, normally these turbine ventilators will be uh, uh, will be made out of aluminiums. So if you use aluminiums, in fact, uh, you, um, you can you can get uh, some you can get the mass, you can get the uh, the principle of moment initials, the moment initials, uh, these informations that you need uh, to prescribe in your SASCM. Also, you can override the mass properties, right? So you can prescribe a fixed mass. So for example, we prescribe 5 kg and uh, we can prescribe the different values and it will, it will calculate uh, the uh, the moment initiates uh, based on based on the mass that you prescribe to the models. So in this case, uh, we have a ventilators of five kg. So uh, we have the center of mass at y equal to zero point one six meters, and also the moment initiates are taken at the center of mass. So this value we will use for our model. So the center of mass is going to be 0 0.116 meters. So this means that the rotation axis origin is going to be uh, located at the same point as your center of mass. Now the initial, the moment initials uh, will be a uh, these three values 0 0.37, 0 0.62, and 0 0.37. Now we assume that the your turbine ventilator is initial velo uh, angular velocity to be zeros. Okay? So having done this, we fully defined uh, our physical model. So the next step is to do meshings, to prescribe meshings to your domain. So to do meshings, uh, we can go to um, the operations and create a new mesh operations, automated mesh, right? So there are three types of volume meshes that we can use, a polyhedral, the tetrahedral, and a trim shell meshes. So we will use a trim shell meshes uh, for our model. Right? So we can name this one as your chambers. And uh, prescribe a base value, so um, 0 0.1 meters, so 0, 0 0.1 meters for the cell inside these chambers. Right. If we execute and we go to mesh, we can see um, it mesh. Right. So. Um, this is this mesh over here is probably not that nice. What we can do is we can select the um, the surface meshes. Okay, so these functions will remesh the surface and ensure that uh, all the surface is properly properly mesh. And we can see the improvement now. The um, the meshings. Uh, correctly capture the geometry of the pipes. So uh, as a first approximate, we probably don't want to uh, use too many elements inside our mesh, inside the mesh. Now we need to mesh the remaining. We can do um, we can do your channel, we can do trim cell mesh as well. Right, and do um, and do a base size of uh, probably zero point two, and then this one as your channel.
Right. Okay. So what we can do is we can go to derive part. Um, and create and create a plane right if we wish to visualize the meshings uh, inside uh, inside your uh, inside your computational domain so we can go to um, A new mesh and shows the mesh inside your domain, right? So uh, this shows the mesh actually the crosses the, the the mesh inside your channels and also your chambers, right? So, to complete the meshings, uh, we can do um, meshings uh, for your ventilators. Now, your for your ventilators, uh, you it is more complex because you got the Got, you got the turbine blades with a various curve. It's probably would be a good idea to use uh, a mesh size as much as a smaller mesh size. For example, 0 0.03. So, uh, so this is the meshings for the vent ventilators. Um, now we definitely can see uh, uh, some very small mesh actually is being produced um, uh, in, uh, near to the blade. So this is uh, due to in order to capture uh, the um, the curve, the curve uh, surface of a blade. Now we definitely can see also the the differences of the mesh between uh, your um, yeah, at the um, the mesh uh, at, at the at the interface which at the interface of the ventilators. So um, so it would be a good idea also to actually try to increase the mesh densities uh, at the interface of the ventilators. <coughs> Okay, so, so uh, to do that, you can go to your chamber. Um, and, and select this surface. Okay, and select uh, this surface. Uh, so you can go to custom control. Create a, a control surface. So what you can do is you can select your, inter your interface 1 and 2. And basically uh, makes the size smaller, for example, 20% and remesh it. Okay, so if you do 20, Do ten. 
So now we can see a more mesh actually is being locate, allocated near these boundaries. So this creates a much better transitions uh, of the mesh inside your uh, ventilated domain and also the mesh inside your chambers. So similarly, we can do the same uh, for um, for between between your channel and your ventilators. Okay, so we can go to your channel and create a surface control. Okay, so this is the interface between your channel and your ventilator domain, right? Um, all we can do is you can go to uh, customs and also try to reduce the mesh. Uh, at the surface of uh, close to the uh, close to the interface, so we can see now it's create a much better transitions. Okay. So having done this, uh, um, now we have completed our meshings. So this will be what the meshing looks like outside, and this will be what the meshing looks like inside. So the next step is to set up uh, your solution strategies. We're going to solve uh, these problems. Now, before we solve it, uh, what we can do is um, we can um, go to the report here. And create a new report for uh, some of the quantity that we're interested in. For example, we can do the element count and select all the part. So this uh, gives us an idea how how much a mesh. Mesh, uh, mesh uh, the uh, the cell count inside your combination domain. What's more important is the quantity that we like to measure. For example, uh, we want to know the the rotations of your turbines. So so we can go to the report here and go to uh, six zero f uh, angular velocities. Right. So. If you're interested in RPM, you need RPM. So this, um, we can create monitor and plot, right? So this allows us to um, to collect the informations on the velocity, the angular velocity of your of the turbine blades, as the uh, as we solve. Uh, over time okay so similarly we uh, we can create other kind of reports for for example the uh, the accelerations if you're interested in the angular accelerations for your body we can also plot perhaps um the average um the mass flow rate the um 
the total mass flow rates that is uh, uh, leaving that, that, that is actually entering through to the domain here so we can go to do mass flow rates and select Um, select the boundary where the flow is coming in okay so this is your mass flow rates total mass flow rates of your inflow and we can plot uh, we can monitor this plot as well can monitor this plot as well okay so now we are almost ready to solve we need to uh, uh, set a few things we need to set our time steps so this uh, um, depends on actually how we set our time step depends on uh, um, a depend on being depends on the rotation of the turbine uh, so, for example, we, we if we if we're looking at a velocity or not profile, so this would be the sort of uh, the rotation speed that we can expect. So, three hundred, it would be three hundred and thirty-six uh, rotations. So, what it means is that um, it would be if it's a uh, three hundred sixty uh, revolution per minute. So one second you expect to have uh, uh, 2.3 revolutions, right? So um, one revolution would take uh, 0 0.44 seconds. So one, one full uh, rotations would take uh, 0 0.44 seconds. So you have to, uh, uh, um, based on these expectations, you can, uh, you can decide uh, uh, um, how many how many times that you need within one uh, one rotations okay uh, maybe you you like to to simulate uh, uh, um, uh, you like to sim to to uh, for for the uh, for your turbine to turn uh, 360 times within within uh, in in one rotations to turn 360 to turn 360 to turn, if you wish your turbine to turn one degree uh, per time steps, then you need to divide this one, uh, uh, this uh, this is zero point four four, this total period of time, by 360, 360 times. If you want your turbine to rotate a uh, two degree in one time steps, then you have to divide by uh, hundred eighties. Okay, so if you divide one hundred eighties, so um. So this means that to simulate two two degree rotation per per time steps, we need uh, um, we need a maximum time step of zero point zero zero uh, two two five seconds. Okay, zero point zero zero two five seconds. So this means that to simulate two degree, uh, we can do zero point zero zero two seconds. Now we are ready to solve, so we can uh, proceed uh, to run the simulations. Now we need to set also uh, the iterations, the number of iterations per 10 steps. For example, you can use 20 uh, iterations uh, per 10 steps. And uh, what we can do is we can disable these maximum steps and, and enable the, uh, uh, the, the physical times that your uh, the simulations will 
uh, um, the, the maximum, the, the physical time that the simulation will store. For example, you wish to run for uh, 10 seconds, then you can place 10 seconds here. So the simulation will carry on until, uh, until, until it reaches 10 seconds, okay? And this will represent the, the, the number of iterations per 10 steps. So here we can see the, the plot of the residual. So this representing, this is actually the graphical representations of uh, the number shown here. So the number shown here represent the residual for each of the equation being solved. So there is a commuting equations, there is a moment equations, and then there is a turbulent equations. So after many hours of calculations, um, you should have a result like this. So this is the results at uh, seven seconds of simulations. So over here, we have the angular velocity uh, over time, and we can see how the velocity, angular velocity of the turbine uh, changes with time. So initially, uh, we have uh, a, a very rapid increase in the velocity, and uh, this kind of uh, uh, it kind of uh, the the increase becomes slower at later times. So here we can see the velocity more or less steady out at uh, at 40, 14 or right in per seconds. Uh, we have the the plot of the mass flow rate inlet uh, uh, through through the through the chambers. So the so the last fluctuations, the last initial fluctuations is due to the initial conditions. So this value also are steady out after one second. We can we we definitely can see uh, the uh, the increase in the mass flow rates uh, due to due to the increase of the turbines velocities. Finally, we have the orientation. This is the degree of your turbine, how much it has turned, all in, in, in seven seconds. So we can see here it turns uh, over 4,000 degrees. So that is uh, more than 10 rotations in the seven, in seven seconds. So we can see also this, uh, the increase, uh, uh, the increase of this, uh, of this, uh, the, the rotation degree. So, so this is also due to the increase of the uh, the rotation rates uh, of your turbine, okay. Now we can also plot the result in RPN. So this is plot uh, from from uh, six second onwards. So we can see the RPM increase also slowly, um, also increase from one hundred thirty seven to uh, one hundred forty one. Uh, from uh, six seconds to seven seconds. Okay, so this is uh, these results is very close to what uh, being reported uh, from from these studies. From this study is reported 306, 136 RPM, and we definitely can see uh, the results also uh, kind of steady out around this value. Now we can plot also the velocity vectors. So this we can make use of your uh, uh, making making uh, make, we, we can make use of your derived part functions. So um, in a derived part here we can we can create uh, different plan sections allow us to visualize the solutions in, uh, in inside your computational domain. So this is the plot of your velocity vectors uh, in the mid sections of your computational domain. And here we can see how the velocity vector looks like inside your turbine ventilators and also at the surface of your uh, turbine ventilators. So 
So this is the velocity magnitudes. And finally, we can also view the velocity from the top. Right? So uh, that will be all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you. Bye bye.